what does your office do or how do you help people? Yep, so we do everything we from the design um, to the installation, the whole nine yards um, from the ground up. You know, we go and we'll come out and meet with the homeowner, kind of get their ideas, we'll have our ideas, um, you know, what they're thinking, take it back. We actually have an engineer do a design based on, you know, calculating sizes and then plant materials. Um, we let homeowners look at that and they can, if they like purple, if they like red, if they want butterflies, you know, depending on what they're looking for, we can pretty well tweak these things however you want. So we do that, you design, we build the things, and then we cost share it all to 75%. What do you mean by cost share? So if a rain garden, total cost of a rain garden was $1,000, we would pay $750 of that. So it only cost the homeowner $250 out of their pocket. Is that just for the plants or is that for the mulch and everything or is that the total package? Everything. The design is completely free. We will do a design for you and it doesn't cost you anything. If you decide you don't want to do it, that's not a problem. Um, but the cost sure covers labor, plants, edging, materials, mulch, everything. Well, I see that you have these um, pretty bullet edgers. Do you guys put those in too? We do. Yep. That's part of the part of the program and that's kind of the thing we've kind of done in our district. I don't know if everybody does it this way, but you can put any kind of edging around these gardens and we like to keep an edge between the grass and the garden itself. Um, so people like the bullet edgers. We've had people do the custom concrete curbing in the past, which we don't do, but you know, we'll cost share that sort of thing. Or you could just do the plain you know, drive-in black edging, but these kind of add another nice little focal point to the gardens. Why do you recommend edging? To keep the grass out of the garden from, from kind of overtaking the garden. We want to we wanna keep as weeds and grass and as much as we can out, you know, as much maintenance free as possible. It's not completely maintenance free, but you know, just to keep it from encroaching, to have a nice edge. It looks a lot neater and a lot, lot nicer that way. Matt, walk us through how you actually do it when you come in. Do you have to scrape the sod off of an area or how does that work? You know, in most cases we have an existing house with probably an existing lawn or landscaping. So what we would do is come in and we really just take a hose. We take a garden hose and lay out the contour of the garden, you know, and mark it out that way. And then we come along and we scrape all the sod off. Um, sometimes the homeowners keep it, sometimes we dump it. Um, then we come in and till up the site, you know, get the soil pretty fluffy, and then we do the shaping, um, you know, shape out the depression, and then plant it and mulch it. And then also in other cases, there's, um, you know, the downspouts. We dig in the downspouts with the tile. Um, there are cases where we sometimes use rock, like a lazy river, instead of digging in a tile um, for having that kind of go down into the depression of the garden. And that's pretty much it. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by a lazy river? Well, water, water's gonna go where it wants to go. Um, you can't really control it. And we've actually come back to some gardens where we've planted mulch, it's all good, and then we get a pretty good sized, you know, eight to 10 inch rain. And you go out back to the site and you see the garden and it blows the mulch out because it's just not prepared for that. So what we'll do is we'll basically make a riverbed out of rock where the water wants to go because you're not going to stop it and then put mulch back and you'll come back. So it, it adds a really kind of unique characteristic to these gardens. We've been doing it more and more um, with downspouts even. Just instead of burying it, you know, put it in a rock riverbed because it's nothing better than seeing the water kind of run over a little rock riverbed. It looks really nice. When you plant the plants, how deep do you plant them? Not very. I mean, we plant them just like you would plant any normal plant, you know, planting a garden or planting a flower bed there. Nothing special, you know, you, as, as deep as the root ball, basically, nothing, nothing deeper. Because they're, you know, when we get them from the greenhouse, they're, you know, in their containers, that's about, we'll plant them as deep as they are in their container. How much then do you water everything in after you're done? We usually give it a pretty good watering right after planting, but we tell folks you don't have to water it. I mean, if it's a super dry year, you're probably going to have to water a new garden that's not established. But once you give these things a year, once they've had a whole growing season, you should never have to water because that root, those roots are going down in the ground and they're, they're self-sufficient. They don't need a bunch of water. Put any fabric down at all underneath the mulch? No, we don't put any weed fabric down. Um, you know, that would prevent infiltration of the water 
And we found with weed fabric, a lot of times it just, it makes more of a mess than it's worth because there's gonna be cracks and there's gonna be seams in that fabric and you're gonna get weeds that come up through that and it makes it really hard to get weeds out. So, you know, we find a thicker mulch is a much, you know, more natural and easier way to do these things. So. When you use the mulch then, do you have to add more the next year? Not necessarily the next year, but you will have to amend your mulch. I mean, it breaks down over time you know, a little bit and it'll shrink and, you know, freshening up your mulch once in a while makes it look kind of pops, makes it look new again. So you do have to amend mulch. You don't have to take it all out and bring all new in, but you know, you add a little bit every couple of years as recommended. How long does it take for um, a rain garden to mature and get looking nice? You know, depending on growing seasons in a, I would say in like a two year span, you could have a pretty mature looking rain garden. And depending on if you, you know, split your plants and kind of manicure them or if you just let them go, you know, and get that more natural look, you know, it can be sooner than later. A couple of years though, I would say they look pretty good. What do you do with the plants in the fall to get them ready for winter or do you need to do anything? In the fall, I would recommend leaving your plants. Leave the growth there. I mean, it protects the roots of the plant, especially in new plantings you know, they catch that snow and it just kind of blankets them. And then I would come around in the spring and then you can clean them up because they'll start new growth that way. Matt, if people have questions or would like to look into getting a rain garden, where can they go for information? Well, you can look at our Facebook page for Stevens SWCD or you can come to our website. That's uh, www.stevensswcd.org or you can give us a call at the office uh, 320-589-4886 and you can ask for myself, Matt, or John. How about people from other counties because we're in a big region. Right, yep, and there's other counties that do it surrounding us. Um, any of your soil and water conservation districts in your home county should offer this type of program or can direct you to where you can go to get this done.